a deep dive into Minnesota governor and vice presidential candidate Tim Walls from a researcher exposing his communist connections and bringing the receipts. Next. Trevor Loudon is my guest, an author, filmmaker, and expert on radical left and Marxist political influence. Influence we've seen uh, right here in Minnesota. Trevor, great to see you. Thanks for being here. Oh, always a pleasure. Thanks so much, Liz. I want to talk about Tim Walls. I know we've been uh, hoping to have this conversation for, for a few weeks now. Our governor, uh, you have a book called Stealth, uh, Kamala Harris's Communist Roots, coming very soon, including a section uh, about Walls. The rest of the country, it seems, and even some in Minnesota, I think, are just now getting to know this guy. But he's been on your radar, it sounds like, for a while, Trevor. Why is that? Well, look, I study the, the radical Marxist infiltration of, of, of the government. And I, I was noticing Tim Waltz 10 years ago for his connections to the Wellstone Action Group uh, for his, even then there was talk about his regular trips to China and his promotion of China while he was serving as a congressman. You know, while, while President Trump was trying to cut back ties with China, he was going in the opposite direction. So he raised a lot of red flags um, in his congressional career and, and, and as soon as he became governor. Your Walls uh, section in your book spends some time talking about that, the Wellstone movement, Wellstone action, which is now known as Repower, a group that's training and that, that has trained many well-known uh, Minnesota Democrats, uh, Walls, Peggy Flanagan, St. Paul Mayor Melvin Carter, Keith Ellison, uh, our Secretary of State, Steve Simon, uh, that list g goes on. What do you know about, about Repower? What, sh what should uh, people know about that group? Well, Repower was set up by Marxists. You know, well, Paul Wellstone was very popular, uh, especially amongst the DFL people. He died in a plane crash. But the radicals around him set up a training school called Wellstone Action. It had Marxists on its board. It had Marxist trainers, many associated with the Communist Party. And they've, they've trained, uh, they claim over 100 thousand people around the country now starting in minnesota and as you said your your whole state is run by this sort of wellstone mafia you know your secretary of state your governor your lieutenant governor your attorney general um amy klobuchar has got big connections to wellstone at one point 40 of the dfl um, contingent, you know, uh, delegation in your state legislature were Wellstone alumni. And it sounds very nice. Wells is a training school for community activists. It is basically a Marxist training school. It is how to get Marxist policies implemented uh, through the Democratic Party, through, through the city councils, town councils, etc. And it has absolute hardcore Marxist as trainers. One of them was connected... Uh, had connections back in the 70s to the weather underground. You know, so it's not this harmless, benevolent organization. It is a Marxist training school. And now it is actually controlled by Maoists, pro-Chinese communists. Uh, as it's now called Repower, it's gone full-on Maoist now. This, in fact, is directly from the website uh, of Repower. It says, we started off as Wellstone Action now, as Repower, we've transformed into what we believe the movement needs, a pro-Black organization centering women of color and trans and gender expansive people of color that is focused on fortifying our organizations and leaders for the big battles that lie ahead of us. And that Repower exists to build a critical mass of social justice movements. Again, that's lifted right from their website. This is where Tim Walsh started his political career trained by Keith Ellison, trained by Peggy Flanagan. You, you know, this is, this is a, a Maoist mafia that now controls Minnesota. So you can understand why they weren't very uh, keen to crack down on the George Floyd riots, because that was run by pro-Chinese Maoists as well. It, you can understand why the DEI policies, the, the indoctrination, the, the left-wing political correct policies are being shoved down your throats in Minnesota because you are ground zero for American Maoism, the same kind of Maoism that was practiced in the Chinese Cultural Revolution. That's what you're getting in Minnesota right now. 
And ground zero, as you've said, to the defund the, the police movement under uh, Walls and Ellison, you put out an excellent video just a couple of years ago highlighting some of these Marxist socialist groups. They call themselves that. This is what, what they are. Uh, they claimed responsibility. Uh, the riots were celebrated by the Freedom Road Socialist Organization. I want uh, people to, to go ahead and listen to, to part of your video. This is Steph York. I'm the political secretary of Freedom Road Socialist Organization. And Al and Stalin were both Marxist-Leninists. Uh, that is how, also how I identify as a Marxist-Leninist as well. On the day President Trump was inaugurated, Steph Yorick vowed to make this country ungovernable. Steph Yorick is married to fellow activist Jess Sundin. Jess Sundin leads a militant anti-police group called Twin Cities, Coalition for Justice for Jamar. Um, I can't tell you the uh, joy it brought all of us to see the third precinct um, destroyed. So right there in their own words, Trevor, it brought them joy to see the police precinct burning. You know, I've yet to see a, a local news story exposing these destructive communist groups for who they really are. Instead, You've been to Minnesota. Uh, you've been labeled a far right conspiracy theorist uh, by that same Minnesota me media. But, but tell us more about these Minnesota groups and, and what we need to know. Well, the main Maoist group, pro, and these are openly pro-China, this group, Freedom Road Socialist Organization. They ran the George Floyd riots. They say, and we've got it in their own words, you've seen them, Liz, the joy we felt when the, when the police station was burnt down. The rioting, the looting, and the arson was an integral part of our movement. We've got the leaders saying this in their own words. So these are these are Maoists. They they worship communist China, and the, the what distinguishes Maoists from ordinary communists? They focus on race, because the old communist model was the workers would rise up and take the wealth of the capitalists. But there is no real class struggle in America. So the Maoists focus almost exclusively on race. The Black Panthers was a Maoist organization. Black Lives Matter is a Maoist organization. It's all about using race as a battering ram to create social division and eventual revolution. So that is why Tim Waltz wouldn't crack down on, on the, the George Floyd riots because these are his people. They are doing what he would be doing if he wasn't in the governor's mansion and he was a 20-year-old university student. He would have been out there supporting them because these are his folks. But he couldn't quite get away with it from the governor's mansion, but he could help them, just as Keith Ellison refuses to prosecute them but will go after conservatives with completely bogus charges whenever it suits them. And go after the the police uh, in in that same same vein. Let's talk more about that uh, with walls and China. I hope people will read your book, um, really for this incredible research. These CCP linked events happening right here in in Minneapolis, right under our nose. Yeah, well, look, look, Tim Waltz. This is in 2019. Did a big event with the um, um, U.S. China People's Friendship Association. This is an old Communist Party front from the 40s. It is a vehicle for Chinese propaganda. And he was doing this right when President Trump was trying to distance ourselves from China, trying to, to break the bonds because we're far too dependent on China. And Tim Walsh was pushing in exactly the opposite direction. And the, the, the woman he spoke alongside was the daughter of a Chinese president, the head of the Chinese um, Li Zhongmai, I think her name was, the head of the Chinese Association for, for Friendship with People in Foreign Countries. This is the Chinese Communist Party's main influence operation for effect, you know, influencing the politics of other countries. He was speaking alongside communist royalty, Chinese communist royalty, one of the top people in China, right there in Minnesota, but he's also working with... Um, the Minnesota Association of Chinese, which has got you know ties to the Chinese so-called secret police stations that were running in St. Paul, didn't didn't work to shut those down at all. He's out. He's trying to defund Minnesota's police, but he allows a Chinese secret police station to operate in St. Paul. 
What does that tell you about his priorities? So is this election, do you think, really about Republicans versus Democrats or freedom uh, versus communism, as some ha- have stated? What, what is on the line this, this November? Yeah, that's, that's exactly it. And every Republican, every DFLA, every independent should want to live in a country that's free of Chinese control. You know, we should. But the goal of the Harris-Waltz administration is to bring this country more under Chinese control than it already is, because both of them come from pro-Chinese backgrounds. Tim Wolfs, as a young man, became very interested in China, went to China more than 30 times, taking children paid for by the Chinese Communist Party on basically propaganda visits. He's worked for China all the time, worked with the local Communist Party, worked with the local Maoists, And Kamala Harris was a Maoist, the pro-Chinese communist from the cradle, from the cradle. So what we'll see if we see a Harris-Waltz administration, we will see 30 30 million illegal immigrants legalized and all voting for one party or mainly voting for one party. So we'll have effectively a one-party state. Most of presidential elections are won or lost by less than 5 million votes. You imagine 30 million illegals voting one way. Uh, We will see the Supreme Court neutered and stacked, so there's no legal recourse. We will see um, the indoctrination of our kids that has been going on ramped up. We will see every, we will see massive increase in refugees, not just from across the southern border, but massive numbers from the Middle East who will then be sent to conservative cities and towns all across the Midwest to just destroy the conservative voting base, we will see this will be like having Hugo Chavez take over America. We'll see the destruction of the American middle class, the destruction of the U.S. economy, and chaos like we have never seen. And if you think that's hyperbole, I lay out this all out in a 300-page book with lots and lots of illustrations in their own words, a lot of very damning stuff, we got to understand this is a revolution we're in. These people aim to finish the American Republic as we know it. You've seen this total unconstitutional behavior of Governor Waltz in Minnesota. You've seen the total unconstitutional behavior of Kamala Harris in California. You give those people power over the entire country with open borders, defunding the police, crime running rampant. Um, how do we ever fight back from that? How do we how do we come back? Where can people find out more about your work and, and also get, get your book? Go to, look, it'll all be available on Amazon soon, but you can, the Kamala Harris book, Stealth, Kamala Harris's Communist Roots, with the bonus section on Tim Waltz, go to trevorloudon.com, myname.com. You can pre-order a copy, uh, sign copies, All my other books and videos are available there as well. So trevorloudon.com is the best place to go right now. Trevor Loudon, thank you so much for your work and thank you for joining me. It's a pleasure, Liz. Thanks and uh, look forward to getting back to Minnesota sometime soon. Hope to see you then. That'll do it for this episode of Liz Collin Reports. We will see you next time. (laughs) 